Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You slay the prophets and stone those who are sent to you. How often have I wanted to gather your children together? As a mother bird collects her young under her wings. But you refuse me, you refuse me, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Your temple will be abandoned. I say to you, you will not see me till the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes as king in the name of the Lord. Jesus went ahead with his ascent to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethage and Bethany, on the mount called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples with these instructions. Go into the village straight ahead of you. Upon entering it, you will find an ass tied there which no one has yet ridden. Untie it and lead it back. If anyone should say to you, why are you untying the beast? Say, the master has need of it. They departed on their errand and found things just as he had said. As they untied the ass, its owner said to them, Why are you doing that? They explained that the master had need of it. Then they led the animal to Jesus, and laying the cloaks on it, helped him mount. They spread the cloaks on the roadway as he moved along, and on his approach to the descent from Mount Olivet, the entire crowd of disciples began to rejoice and praise God loudly for the display of power they had seen. Blessed is he who comes as king in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He replied, If they were to keep silence, I tell you the very stones would cry out. Coming within sight of the city, he wept over it and said, If only you had known the path to peace this day, but you have completely lost it from view. Days will come upon you when your enemies encircle you with, with a rampart, hem you in and press you hard from every side. They will wipe you out, you and your children within your walls, and leave not a stone on a stone within you, because you fail to recognize the time of your visitation. Then he entered the temple and began ejecting the traitors, saying, Scripture has it, 
My house is meant for a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. He was teaching in the temple area from day to day. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, were looking for some way to destroy him, as were the leaders of the people, but they had no idea how to achieve it, for indeed the entire populace was listening to him and hanging on his words. One day when Jesus was teaching in the temple and proclaiming the good news, the high priests and Pharisees, accompanied by the elders, approached him with the question, tell us, by what authority do you do these things? In other words, who has authorized you? He replied, let me put a question for you to answer. Did the baptism of John come from God or from men? They held a brief conference during which someone said, if we answer from God, he will say, then why do you not believe in it? But as if we say from men, the people will stone us. So convinced are they that John was a prophet. They ended by replying, they did not know where it came from. Jesus said to them, in that case, neither will I tell you by whose authority I act. He then began to tell the people the following parable. A man planted a vineyard, leased it to ten and farmers, went away for a long time. At vintage time, he sent a servant to the ten and farmers to receive his share of the crop from them. But they beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent a second servant whom they also beat. Him too they sent away empty-handed after treating him shamefully. He sent to the third whom they likewise maltreated before driving him away. The owner of the vineyard said to himself, What am I to do now? Perhaps if I send the son I love, they will respect him. But when the tenant farmer saw the son, they reflected, This is the heir. Let us kill him so that the inheritance will be ours. With that, they dragged him outside the vineyard and killed him. What fate do you suppose the owner of the vineyard has in store for them? I will tell you. He will make an end to those tenant farmers and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, God forbid. He looked directly at them and said, what do scriptures mean when they say, the stone which the builders rejected has become the keystone of the structure? The man who falls on that stone will be smashed to pieces. It will make dust of anyone on whom it falls. At these words, the scribes and high priests tried to get their hands on him, but they were afraid of the people. They were well aware that he had told the parable with them in mind. Waiting their chance, they sent spies to him in the guise of honest men to try to trap him in speech so that they might then hand him over to the office and authority of the procurator. They put to him this problem. Teacher, we know that your words and your doctrine are completely forthright, that you are no respecter of persons, but teach the way of God and truth. May we pay the tax to the emperor or not? Realizing their duplicity, he said, show me a coin. Whose head is this? Whose inscription do you read? Caesar's, they replied. Then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. They were unable to trap him publicly in speech. His answer completely disconcerted them and reduced them to silence. Some Sadducees came forward, the ones who claim there is no resurrection, to pose this problem. Master, Moses prescribed that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife and no child, the brother should marry the widow and raise posterity to his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first one married and died childless. Next, the second one married the widow, then the third, and so on. All seven died without leaving her any children. Finally, the widow herself died. At the resurrection, whose wife will she be? 
Remember, seven married her. Jesus said to them, the children of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those judged worthy of in a place in the age to come and of resurrection from the dead do not. They become like angels and are no longer liable to death. Sons of the resurrection, they are sons of God. Moses in the passage about the bush showed that the dead rise again when he called the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead but of the living. All are alive for him. Some of the scribes responded, Well said, teacher. They did not dare ask him anything else. <laughs> Jesus then said to them, How can they say that the Messiah is the son of David? Does not David himself say in the Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand while I make your enemies your footstool. Now if David accords in the title Lord, how can he be his son? In the hearing of all the people, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of the scribes who like to parade around in their robes, love marks of respect in public, front seats in synagogues and places of honor at banquets. These men are going through the savings of widows while they recite long prayers to keep up appearances. The heavier sentence will be theirs. He glanced up. And so the rich putting their offerings into the treasury. And also a poor widow putting in two copper coins. And that he said, I assure you, this poor widow has put in more than all the rest. They make contributions out of their surplus, but she from her want has given what she could not afford. Every penny she had to live on. Some were speaking of how the temple was adorned with precious stones and votive offerings. He said, these things you are contemplating, the day will come when not one stone will be left on another, but it will all be torn down. They asked him, when will this be, teacher? And what is it the sign that it is going to happen? He said, take care not to be misled. Many will come in my name saying, I am he and the time is at hand. Do not follow them. Neither must you be perturbed when you hear of wars and insurrections. These things are bound to happen first, but the end does not follow immediately. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and plagues and famines in various places. And in the sky, fearful omens and great signs. But before any of this, they will manhandle and persecute you, summoning you to synagogues and prisons, bringing you to trial before kings and governors, all because of my name. You will be brought to give witness on account of it. I bid you resolve not to worry about your defense beforehand. For I will give you words and a wisdom which none of your adversaries can take exception to or contradict. You will be delivered up even by your parents, brothers, relatives and friends. And some of you will be put to death. All will hate you because of me. Yet not a hair of your head will be harmed. By patient endurance you will save your lives. When you see Jerusalem encircled by soldiers, know that its devastation is near. Those in Judea must flee to the mountains. Those in the heart of the city must escape it. Those in the country must not return. These indeed will be days of retribution when all that is written must be fulfilled. The women who are pregnant or nursing at the breast will fare badly in those days. The distress in the land and the wrath against the people will be great. The people will fall before the sword. They will be led captive in the midst of the Gentiles. Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars. 
on the earth. Nations will be in anguish, distraught at the roaring of the sea and the waves. Men will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the earth. The powers in the heavens will be shaken. After that, men will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with great power and glory. When these things begin to happen, stand erect and hold your heads high, for your deliverance is near at hand. Then he told them a parable. Notice the fig tree or any other tree. You observe when they are budding and know for yourself that summer is near. Likewise, when you see the things happening, happening of which I speak, know that the reign of God is near. Let me tell you this. The present generation will not pass away until all this takes place. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but my words will not pass. Be on God, lest your spirits become bloated with indulgence and drunkenness and worldly cares. The great day will suddenly close in on you like a trap. The day I speak of will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth. So be on the watch. Pray constantly for the strength to escape whatever is in prospect and to stand secure before the Son of Man. He would teach in the temple by day and leave the city to spend the night on the Mount of Olives at daybreak of the The feast of the unleavened bread, known as the Passover, was drawing near. The high priests and scribes began to look for some way to dispose of him, but they were afraid of the people. Then Satan took possession of Judas, the one called Iscariot, a member of the Twelve. He went off to confer with the chief priests and officers about a way to hand him over to them. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He accepted then kept looking for an opportunity to hand him over without creating a disturbance. The day of, um, of unleavened bread arrived, in which is appointed to sacrifice the Paschal lamb. Accordingly, Jesus sent Peter and John off with the instruction, go and prepare our Passover supper for us. They asked him, where do you want us to get it ready? He explained to them, just as you enter the city, you will come upon a man carrying a water jar. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner, the teacher asks you, do you have a guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? That man will show you an upstairs room, spacious and furnished. It is there you are to prepare. They went off and found everything just as he had said, and accordingly they prepared the Passover supper. the hour arrived, he took his place at table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have greatly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I tell you, I will not eat again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then taking a cup, 
he offered a blessing and thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. I tell you from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the coming of the reign of God. Then taking bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body to be given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He did the same with the cup after eating, saying as he did so, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which will be shed for you. And yet, the hand of my betrayer is with me at this table. The Son of Man is following out his appointed course, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to argue among themselves as to which of them would do such a deed. A dispute arose among them about who should be regarded as the greatest. He said, earthly kings lord it over their people. Those who exercise authority over them are called their benefactors, yet it cannot be that way with you. Let the greater among you be as the junior, the leader as the servant. Who, in fact, is the greater? He who reclines at table or he who serves the meal, is it not the one who reclines at table? Yet I am in your midst as the one who serves you. You are the ones who have stood loyally by me in my temptation. I, for my part, assign to you the dominion my father has assigned to me. In my kingdom you will eat and drink at my table, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon. Simon. Remember that Satan has asked for you to sift you all like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may never fail. You in turn must strengthen your brothers. He said, Lord, at your side I am prepared to face imprisonment and death itself. I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow today until you have three times denied that you know me. He asked them, when I sent you on mission without purse or traveling bag or sandals, were you in need of anything? Not a thing, they replied. To which he said, now, however, the man who has a purse must carry it, and the same with the traveling bag. And the man without a sword must sell his coat and buy one. It is written in scripture, and he was counted among the wicked. And this, I tell you, must come to be fulfilled in me. All that has to do with me approaches its climax. They said, Lord, here are two swords. He answered, enough. Then he went out and made his way, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. His disciples accompanied him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not be put to the test. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, then went down on his knees and prayed in these words, Father, if it is your will, Take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel then appeared to him from heaven to strengthen him. In his anguish, he prayed with all the greater intensity, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. Then he rose from prayer and came to his disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted with grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Wake up and pray that you may not be subjected to the trial. While he was still speaking, a crowd came, led by the man named Judas, one of the twelve. 
he approached Jesus to embrace him. Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When the companions of Jesus saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we use the sword? One of them went so far as to strike at the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Jesus said in answer to their question, Enough! Then he touched the ear and healed the man. But to those who had come out against him, the chief priests, the chiefs of the temple guard and the ancients, Jesus said, Am I a criminal that you come out after me armed with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you never raised a hand against me. But this is your hour, the triumph of darkness. Then they led him away under arrest and brought him to the high, the high priest while Peter followed at a distance. Later they lighted a fire in the middle of the courtyard and were sitting beside it. And Peter sat among them. A servant girl saw him sitting in the light of the fire. She gazed at him intently then said, this man was with him. But he denied it saying, woman, I do not know him. A little while later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. But he replied, no sir. Not I. About an hour after that, someone else spoke more insistently. This man was certainly with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter responded, my friend, I do not know what you're talking about. At the very moment he said this, a cock crowed. The Lord turned around and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. If all the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. <laughs> Meanwhile, the men guarding Jesus amused themselves at his expense. They blindfolded him first, then slapped him, then taunted him saying, play the prophet. Which one struck you? And they directed many other insulting words at him. At daybreak, the elders of the people, the chief priests and scribes assembled again. Once they had brought him before their council, they said, tell us, are you the Messiah? He answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I question you, you will not answer. This much only will I say. From now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power of God. So you are the Son of God. The Son of God? He answered, it is you who say I am. They said, what need have we of witnesses? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the entire assembly rose up and led him before Pilate. They started his prosecution by saying, we found this man subverting our nation, opposing the payment of taxes to Caesar, and calling himself the Messiah, a king. Pilate asked him, are you the king? Jews. He answered, that is your turn. Pilate then reported to the chief priests and crowds, I do not find a case against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people by his teaching throughout the whole of Judea, from Galilee where he began to this very place. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man were a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who happened to be in Jerusalem at the time. <laughs> Herod.
Herod was extremely pleased to see Jesus. From the reports about him, he had wanted for a long time to see him, and he was hoping to see him work some miracle. He questioned Jesus at considerable length, but Jesus made no answer. The chief priests and scribes were at hand to accuse him vehemently. Herod and his guards then treated him with contempt and insult, after which they put a magnificent robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate, who had previously been set against each other, became friends from that day. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the ruling class, and the people and said to them, You have brought this man before me as one who subverts the people. I have examined him in your presence and find no charge against him arising from your allegations. Neither is Herod who has therefore sent him back to us. Obviously, this man has done nothing that calls for death. Therefore, I mean to release him once I have taught him a lesson. But the whole crowd cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas for us! Barabbas! This Barabbas had been thrown in prison for causing an uprising in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them again, for he wanted Jesus to be the one they released. But they shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him! He said to them for the third time, What wrong is this man guilty of? I have not discovered anything about him that calls for the death penalty. I therefore will chastise him and release him. But they demanded with loud cries that he be crucified and their shouts increased in violence. Pilate then decreed that what they demanded should be done. He released the one they asked for, who'd been thrown in prison for insurrection and murder, and delivered Jesus up to their wishes. As they led him away, they laid hold of one Simon the Cyrenean who was coming in from the fields. They put a crossbeam on Simon's shoulders for him to carry along behind Jesus. A great crowd of people followed him, including many women who beat their breasts and lamented over him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. The days are coming when they will say, Happy are the sterile, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin saying to the mountains, fall on us, into the hills cover us. If they do these things in the green wood, what will happen in the dry? Two others, who were criminals, were led along with him to be crucified. When they came to Skull Place, as it was called, they crucified him there, and the criminals as well, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They divided his garments, rolling dice for them, the people stood there watching, and the leaders kept jeering at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also made fun of him, coming forward to offer him their sour wine and saying, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. <laughs> There was an inscription over his head. This is the King of the Jews. 
one of the criminals hanging in crucifixion blasphemed him. Aren't you the Messiah? Then save yourself and us. But the other one rebuked him. Have you no fear of God, seeing you're under the same sentence? We deserve it after all. We are only paying the price for what we've done. But this man has done nothing wrong. He then said, Jesus, remember me when you enter upon your reign. And Jesus replied, I assure you, this day will be with me in paradise. It was now around midday, and darkness came over the whole land until mid-afternoon with an eclipse of the sun. The curtain in the sanctuary was torn in two. Jesus uttered a loud cry and said, Father, in your hands I commend my spirit. After he said this, he expired. Centurion, upon seeing what had happened, gave glory to God, saying, Surely this was an innocent man. When the crowd which assembled for the spectacle saw what had happened, they went on beating their breasts. All his friends and the women who had come with him from Galilee were standing at a distance, watching everything. There was a man named Joseph. An upright and holy member of the Sanhedrin who had not been associated with their plan or their action. He was from Arimathea, a Jewish town, and looked expectantly for the reign of God. He approached Pilate with a request for Jesus' body. He took it down, then wrapped it in fine linen and laid it in a tomb, hewn out to the rock in which no one had yet been buried. That was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come out with him from Galilee followed along behind. They saw the tomb and how his body was buried. Then they went home to prepare spices and perfumes. They observed the Sabbath as a day of rest in accordance with the law. On the first day of the week at dawn, the women came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They saw the stone rolled back from the tomb, but when they entered the tomb, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were still at a loss over what to think about all this, two men in dazzling garments stood beside them. Terrified, the women bowed to the ground. The men said to them, why are you searching for the living one among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised up. 
Remember what he said to you when he was still with you in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. With this reminder, his words came back to them. On the return from the tomb, the women told all these things to the eleven and the others. The women were Mary of Magdala, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. The other women with them also told the apostles, but the story seemed like nonsense, and they refused to believe them. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. He stooped down, but could see nothing but the wrappings. So he went away full of amazement at what had occurred. Two of them that same day were making their way to a village named Emmaus, seven miles distant from Jerusalem, discussing as they went their way all that had happened. In the course of their lively exchange, Jesus approached and began to walk along with them. However, they were restrained from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you discussing as you go your way? They halted in distress, and one of them, Cleopas by name, asked him, Are you the only resident in Jerusalem who does not know the things that went on these past few days? What things, he said. All those that had to do with Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet powerful in word and deed in the eyes of God and all the people. How our chief priests and leaders delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. We were hoping that he would be the one who would set Israel free. Besides all this, today, the third day since all these things happened, some women of our group have just brought us some astonishing news. They went to the tomb before dawn and failed to find his body, but returned with the tale that they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our number went to the tomb and found it to be just as the women said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, What little sense you have. How slow you are to believe all that the prophets have announced. Did not the Messiah have to undergo all these things so as to enter into his glory? Beginning then with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them every passage of scripture which referred to him. By now they were near the village to which they were going, and he acted as if he were going farther. But they pressed him, stay with us. It is nearly evening, the day is practically over. So he went in to stay with them. When he had seated himself with them to eat, he took bread, pronounced the blessing, then broke it, and began to distribute it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him. Whereupon he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning inside us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up immediately and returned to Jerusalem where they found the eleven and the rest of the company assembled. They were greeted with, The Lord has been raised. He has appeared to Simon. And they told them the account of the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about all this, he himself stood in their midst. Peace to you. In their panic and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. So he said to them, why are you disturbed? Why do such ideas cross your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is really mine. Touch me. And see that a ghost does not have flesh and bones as I do. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. They were still incredulous for sheer joy and wonder. So he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They brought him a piece of cooked fish which he took and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, Recall those words I said to you when I was still with you. Everything written about me and the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to the understanding of the scriptures. 
He said, Thus it is written, that the Messiah must suffer and on the third day rise again from the dead. In his name, penance for the remission of sins is to be preached to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of this. See, I send down upon you the promise of my Father. Remain here in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out near Bethany. And with hands appraised, he blessed them. As he blessed them, he was taken up to heaven. They fell down to do him reverence, then returned to Jerusalem filled with joy. There they were to be found in the temple, constantly Blessed praising God. Is he who comes as king in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Blessed is he who comes as king in the name of the Lord. offer you praise, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for what you have hidden from the learned and the clever, you have revealed to the merest children. Amen. Thank you.